Hey folks, Steve here. How you doing? It's pretty late at night, but I'm getting this video around realizing that I did not have an adequate introduction. So here's your introduction. What I'm doing in this video is I'm making a crown holder jig and I got the idea from Ron Polk and I believe he got the idea from Gary Katz. Either of those two would be great source material if this video is not enough or you'd just like to go back to the source material. I strongly encourage that. I was able to find video at the very, that I tacked onto the very end of this, and that video is me using the crown jig, the crown holder jig, and I was doing a lot of coping late at night when I was doing my laundry room, trying to finish it in one particular evening. So I worked late into the night as long as I felt I could work. So the last four or five minutes is just me using it, doing a lot of coping with my jigsaw and a Collins coping foot, and then at the very, very end, I'm going to include some footage of the actual installed crown just to show you how it installed. All right. Thank you very much. Hopefully you uh, enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe. You all have a wonderful day. Thanks. So for me, the first part to building these two jigs for crown, maybe the third if I do the holder, will be simply to review those videos. I, and I choose Ron Paul just because it's, it's easy. I remember what his videos are called. I don't have to do a lot of searching. So I've called them up. I've got my iPad ready to go. I'm in shade so everything is cool there. And I have it Bluetooth through my stereo, so I'm not only charging my iPad, but I've got the stereo for sound, and I have it up. Crown molding is so easy. Part four, building the jigs, building the jigs. <laughs> I should do things with music, right? Or some kind of catchy introduction. I do play the guitar a little bit. Maybe I should do my own. Yeah, it's a good job. All right. And then he's explaining exactly uh, where he is going to get some of his dimensions at. So that's where I'm going to start. I'm going to go ahead and watch this and take some notes. You're not going to watch me watching this, taking notes. That's pointless. And I'll get back with you once I have an idea of exactly how big I want to build this. It will be adjustable, but what's the maximum size that I need this thing to be to make it happen for any crown that I'm going to install, knowing I don't do gigantic crown. It's going to be, you know, maybe tall stuff, but standard. In the video itself... It's part four, like I said, and if you go j literally just to 28 seconds in the video, from 28 till after four minutes, he talks about actually creating the crown installer, uh, which will allow you to install crown at the exact proper angle with respect to the ceiling and the wall every single time because it just holds it up in there at the exact position it needs to be in. No guessing whether, you know, you've got it in, you've got it out, you don't have to draw pencil lines. I will be making that. I think I'm going to make blanks on that, but that'll be a little later. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make this crown holder, which is effectively just a U right there, just a, a three pieces of lumber that make a U. One piece will actually be an adjustable piece. The other two, the side and the bottom will be fixed. The back and the bottom will be fixed. The front will slide in and out. He gives no dimensions other than the base. The base, he said, for him is going to be two feet long. And he said that his back and his front uprights will actually be less than two feet to give clamping, uh, room for clamping. So I'm going to determine otherwise that it looks like it's approximately anywhere between, I don't know, six and eight inches wide on his, on his video. I'm going to go seven. I think that's just a comfortable number there. So I'm going to go seven. And with that, on my back upright, I'm going to go six inches. And then for my front upright, I'm going to go four inches. It, it doesn't have to be as tall because it only receives the base of the crown on the angle. So it's that low point. So it probably could be two inches and that would be fine. But I'm going to do four inches just because I can. that was the bottom and I ripped it actually at seven and a half because two of these will actually take an inch and a half away from the full dimension if it were the maximum dimension that it could be which I don't think will ever happen but I, so I went ahead and just made sure that I hit I guess an even six inches on the inside of the thing this is going to be the front piece because it's a uh, short fall off I can't make it the back and so I'm going to rip this to four inches <laughs> cut it. This will get cut down three inches on either side and that way I have clamp ability as he had indicated. Now I need the back and the back is going to be, I'm going to go ahead and do six inches for a back and I'll see if that looks too tall. So the idea would be more or less to build it like that and so the crown would nest tall side down 
and it would nest in the proper orientation as far as ceiling wall okay so ceiling wall that's how it would nest in there and then it would hang over off off the bench and that's where you're able to cut the cope as it would install using a basically looking at the plumb and making sure you remove all that material so now it's just taking some material off of the two uprights so they don't have to be as long as the base. I'm going to arbitrarily say this is 24 inches, even though it's a little bit bigger. And so I'm going to go ahead and take these down to about 18 inches. I have made my marks at 18. I checked them against the base. It looks appropriate. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut these. Then I need to get my pocket jig, my pocket hole jig out, and then do some pocket holes, uh, pocket holes for this. And then I'll assemble the thing and show you what I've got. Oh, yeah. Now pocket holes and ready for assembly. I don't know why I haven't done this before because it's really this easy. And the times I've done crown and thought, man, I should have made that. Man, I should have made that. Man, I should have made that. And so I'm kind of rigging something up on my bench or, or just clamping stuff down and doing the best I can, cutting it flat. Um, so, wow, you know, it's just, geez, this is easy. This is super easy. Okay, let me go get the drill and everything else and, and I'll show you the assembled version. Grab this for round over. That way I can just ease the edges a little bit, make it a little bit easier to grab. I have seven and a, seven and a half inches. And I agree, this is, could probably go down to six and a half inches easy, so I could lose a whole inch off of this. Because this angle here is such that if I tried to put a piece of crown in all the way to here, it would be way taller than this anyway. You'll be able to argue that your back piece that is going to be fixed and is not going to move should be taller than the tallest crown you plan on cutting. Uh, I made mine six, but this piece would be re easy to remake and make it seven, seven and a half. Uh, I'll figure that out as I continue to do crown, and if I do anything really super tall, maybe this is the piece that needs to change. Otherwise, though, this is six inches, this is seven and a half, this is four. This is the piece that will move in and out. And so I have one, two, three, four, five pocket screws. I have a center line, here, let me show you. I have a center line and a center line. Uh, and a center line here and two guidelines on the outside and this will simply move in or move out as the uh, as this number changes for the spring angle for the projection of the crown my cordless router is all is almost always set up for a round over that's a 1 8 round over bit so that's just set and ready to go when I grab it that's why I would like a second one of these with probably a cutter bit in it and that way I don't have to swap out or change I do need to get a plunge base for say the next one but this is this is great the way it is I sanded everything with 150 grit sandpaper just to say I did nice and smooth although the A side is certainly just buttery smooth anyway but I went ahead and got the C side as well well I'm gonna call this project done I have a crown holder I am ready to grab some crown and do some coping now with that I believe it's time to do the crown stop I already have one but I want to redo it and see if I can't make it better maybe more streamlined something but I'm going to try it again and that will be a new video so please like and subscribe if you like and want to subscribe I would really appreciate that uh, please uh, share the video if you can if you think somebody else would like to get uh, an amusing moment because of this goofball by all means please do so I really appreciate it help me help me grow my subscriber base and that way I can share my goofiness with a larger population hey you all take care see you in the next video which for me will be a crown stop and I'm gonna move over there and start making it all right oh goofed up my thumbnail and so and then the band-aid was coming off so but nah. Hey folks, Steve here again with a voiceover. I was able to find some footage of me actually using that crown jig that I just made in this video. And as a bonus, I have me doing some coping with that Collins coping foot on my jigsaw.
So what I have for the next like four plus minutes is just me making a series of copes and talking about it. And here I'm actually uh, doing the copes for the crown in my laundry room up uh, upstairs in my house. And at the at very end of the video, I'll actually just go into and do a quick film of the laundry room and I will show you the crown that I installed that I'm actually cutting right here. So anyway, this is all bonus. Crown uh, jig is made and it holds very, very well. Thank you very much, folks. Please like and subscribe. Hey, hey. Coping by flashlight. Yay! Oh, man. I do miss daylight. Anyway, working well. I did goof up, though. I actually nipped the tip off on an angle, so I'm hoping caulk will fill that on my coat. Uh, fortunately, it's painted, and my wife is a very good painter. And this was the long double coat piece, so <laughs> I have two more double copes. I have to cope one side. Uh, yeah, actually, I'm coping the first of two sides. If this side goes well, then I've got it ready for length. I'll cut the length, and then i got to cope it again. So not too bad. So I feel good about uh, cutting the other side on this one. I can live with that. I had a little bit of a chip, but I can live with that. Uh, that'll caulk and paint. Okay, now I can cut this for actual the other side of the coat. Oh, brother. Hmm. Nothing like doing it twice. But I do get results. All right, two more to go, and I am hopefully installing with no extra cuts. That would be, that's that's not cool. All right, so what am I doing? by cutting it this way, you can actually look down the piece and see that it's going to match in. Yep. Okay, I'm shooting for caulkable. <laughs> That's why they made caulk and big tubes, right? Okay, now i got to cut the other miter, the inside cope, and then or cut the uh, 45, then come back and cope it.
Now we check to see if any of this fits. I trust my measurements, but I'm always surprised when it fits. Is that wrong? <laughs> All right. Hey, hey, I was just creating that crown holder jig video, trying to get that one out, and realized that after I found all that extra footage of me doing the coping outside late at night, that uh, I figured, why not capstone that video showing you the actual install of the crown itself. So I think the first piece I was cutting was the long double cope. And the long double cope, I believe, is right here. So let me just flash this around. All right, so here you go. So there is that long double cope. Longest piece in the room, it goes from there, excuse the hangers, into there. So that'd be a double cope. And the reason that's a double cope is because that's an outside miter and I want this piece to actually be a butt. And then because the, the coping actually is, that operates on tension. And so I want this piece to be the cope into that. Because uh, you can't provide tension with an outside miter. At least I can't. And so come over here. And then that would have been the uh, the cope as well. So that would have been a butt cut all the way over to here. That would have been a cope. The reason why that is a cope, because this is an outside miter. Because I've got this little, I don't know, a two-inch jog or, or whatever that is. And so that two-inch jog, that's a butt cut. And then this is a cope. Comes over here. And that's a cope. So this is another double cope. So that's my second double cope piece. Because again, that's a butt coming to an outside miter, and then that outside miter returning in is a butt. That it would be a cope all the way out here. That's a cope, so this is my third double cope piece because this, again, is an outside miter, and that returns us right back. So, glancing in at these joints, you can see that they really are very, very tight. I mean, they, they look really good. And, you know, as much as I would love to say it's because I'm a master crowner, I am not a master crowner, but I'm, I'm okay. And my wife is, however, a master painter. So I think she probably is the one that really is uh, making everything look, you know. So all credit to her. I just, I put the nails in. All right, well, there you go, folks. Uh, just really happy, happy, happy with this crown job. That crown jig made a world of difference to be able to hold it correctly in place and be able to, to cope and be able to look at it and know that you removed all the materials so when you install it, there's no back material that's going to get in the way of it seating correctly. And triple copes, or, you know, double copes, you know, and three pieces, hey, <laughs> you know, it's, it's it's the way the room works out, because I want to have the copes in the right spot, because they hold in because of tension, because you can't glue them, and so, you know, you spring them in there, and it just, it, it worked out great. So these, these joints should not open up. All the outside miters are glued, all the inside double copes are tension fit, so it should be good to go for a long period of time. Hey, folks, thank you very much for sticking with me. A little bit longer video than I typically do. But I was really happy to find all that extra footage. I don't know what else I would have done with it, so it seemed to be appropriate here. I'm not going to do a how-to on, you know, uh, doing coping. There are people out there that have done way better videos than I could do. So, anyway, my project, there you go. Hope you enjoyed it. You all take care. Again, like and subscribe. Thank you very much.